Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to do a mini flip through of my sketch a day. This is a sketchbook from Lake Michigan Book Press, and Lake Michigan Book Press does custom sketchbooks. She has some that are standard that are listed on the website, but you can customize the paper that you put in it. You can say how many pages you want in it, what kind of cover you want on it. There's lots of different ways to customize them if you wish. And I asked for one that would have 365 pages in it, which is called the sketch a day. And it's taken me a long time to get through this, mostly because I go through phases. Sometimes I'm just obsessive and I paint in watercolor every day. And then other times I get busy on other things. And I've been doing a lot of pencil and pen sketches lately. So I have not given this sketchbook much love. And I am determined to finish this one by the end of the summer. There's I guess I'm about three quarters of the way through this and I'm going to do another sketch today, which will be a study of wet in wet with a little bit of wet on dry at the very end of it. Just a quick sketch and it might be a nice way for you to practice your own control of the water and the pigment. But uh, yeah, on Saturday I'm going to do something similar. I'll do a larger painting That'll be not this particular painting that I'm doing today, but if you'd like to paint along with me, I will put some information in the doobly-doo about exactly what supplies you might want to have on hand. I haven't filmed that yet, so I don't know what those will be, but I thought it would be nice to do a paint along if you're interested. It'll be something really simple that doesn't require sketching, but I will work from a photo so you can have that downloaded ahead of time. So let's get started on today's sketch and cover another page in this book. I went out plein air painting with a couple friends recently and had a bit of a fail with my painting because I haven't been doing a lot of plein air watercolor lately, and I totally lost control of my wet in wet painting, and I needed practice with that. So I'm doing lots of practice at home to just remind myself of how wet the paper needs to be, how much pigment I need to use, and how wet that pigment should be at each stage of the painting. And a small study like this is helpful. It's going to be necessary for me to work larger because part of the problem was that I was working outside. It was very humid, so things weren't drying quite right. I didn't have patience, and I was also working vertical. Here I'm working horizontal just because filming is easier horizontal, but when you're working vertical, the pigment also slides downward on the paper, and just there's just lots of control issues. But nonetheless, I've got the paper really wet and I put some soft blue shapes in the background and in the water in the foreground. And I'm just going to let those melt out. They're going to get really soft by the time this is done. As long as the paper is wet, the pigment's going to continue to move. And if you don't want it to move, then you want drier paper. But if you want a really misty look, and that's what I was going for here, that's what I was trying to paint when I was outdoors, I just couldn't get that misty look if I had done the painting on dry paper because I wouldn't get those soft edges. So I've got some green gold that I'm dropping into the ground areas and some darker greens in the trees. And I'll just put a very, very hazy line of trees off in the distance just so I get that curve of a river winding through here. I have no photo reference for this, by the way. I'm just making it up out of my head to just get some practice done. And I'm just going to start thickening up my pigment now because those pigments that I painted with already were very wet. There's just lots of water in there. And now I'm going to just beef it up so that I can start creating some more distinct shapes. That first bit was just establishing in general where the spits of land are going to be and where the trees are going to be. And now I can start adding in a few darker areas. The thicker pigment is not going to soften out as much. It's still going to get really soft, but it's not going to blend out as much, but it's going to start giving me that real misty kind of look that I wanted to create. As long as the paper stays wet, then that 
pigment is just going to keep moving. If your paper gets dry, then you can always just spritz it really lightly with water. But if you can get that water consistency right at the beginning, then you can start to figure out how long you have to paint all the shapes in there. And that's where practice comes in because there's no way I can say, you know, you paint this much water down and then you have two minutes to get the rest of such and such done in order to get this effect. That's just not possible. So practicing yourself just so you know what your pigments do and how you paint. Just know that there are sometimes working quickly is going to really help a lot. So I've put two different colors for just different tree colors on the left and right, just to give it some variety. Mixed up a really thick pigment and I'm using my needle brush. And this needle brush has a large belly and a very fine tip so I can get some nice calligraphy marks, just, you know, little dancing brush strokes. But I'm also using really thick pigment, so some of this is going to give me more control, more detail, and the pigment's going to move less. The drier paper, it's still very wet, but it's not, it, it's not as wet as it was in the first place. The drier paper is going to help this pigment stay in place, as well as the thickness of the pigment, the thickness of the paint that I've got mixed up. because. If you're using paint that's mixed really thin, it's going to blend out into whatever water or whatever pigment is already there. The thicker it is compared to the paper, it's going to stay put more. And I wanted to just get another level of soft blending versus, you know, really crisp detail with a lot of contrast. But notice that the tree trunks that I painted in there in the first place are already melting out. One of the things this starts to give you is a whole set of layers of softness. And that's what I was trying in the plein air painting that I did. I wanted these layers of trees. I was in a forest and trying to paint like the foreground trees really crisp and distant ones really soft. And I just couldn't figure out how to do that. So I can't wait to go back to that location once I get some practice under me and see if I can if I can fix that and if I can learn how to do that, because I just have a great vision for this clearing that I wanted to paint that was among some trees. So I've decided I'm going to mix the pigment even thicker and put more in there. And the first ones disappeared. These will stay a little bit more. But again, the paper is still wet, so this will soften out. You can keep going with this until you decide you've got enough of those layers in there of the soft edges and, and just, you know, keep layering and layering because all the ones that are underneath that are, you know, the earlier layers that got really soft, those will continue to melt out until you decide, okay, now is the time to zap it. So I've got my heat gun out to dry it so that then I can add in some very crisp details. Now, when I'm out painting plein air, I don't have a hairdryer with me. And I was joking with a lady who walked by. She was just a, a random person walking through the park. And she was also a watercolorist. And she's like, oh, I see you're having water management troubles. They need to have a little plug out here in one of the trees. So you can plug in a hairdryer or something. I'm like, yeah, that would be nice. But instead, what I needed to do was just be patient. I needed to lay the painting flat and just wait and give it a good half an hour, but I didn't want to, I wanted to keep painting. So uh, gonna have a better strategy next time. But now I'm painting that same thick pigment on top of dry paper because it's all completely dried. And now the pigment is only gonna move where there's water. So as long as I'm not using much water at all, I get really crisp edges. And that's where I can do my calligraphy that I love to do. And I call it calligraphy. I don't know. I've heard a couple of my teachers call it that. Um, Not sure if that's an official word for it, but it feels like that. It feels like handwriting. And the way that you do any kind of calligraphy on your work is going to be different than anybody else because it's the way you wield your brush. And this needle brush does that really beautifully because I can get that that fine tip where the, the belly of the brush 
narrows down, I can lay it down on its side and get some larger areas in there and create some dry brush look. This brush has a lot of versatility when you get to this phase of adding it in. It's perfect for trees. It is an expensive brush and I have tried a couple other ones and maybe I'll try doing a video sometime comparing them. I have not found another one that works the way my Da Vinci's work. And I have a couple sizes in the Da Vinci, but the, these brushes just are so nice. And the way they operate is very different, possibly because these are also sable brushes. And the other ones that I've bought, I've been trying to look for other ones because I want to find something cheaper for those who want to do this kind of work in your painting, but you don't want to spend as much on the brush. <laughs> I've been looking, I really have, have not found anything that works quite the way this one does. But now I'm, I mixed in a little bit more water because I was finding I was getting way too much thickness in the paint and it was just hard to move things around. And as I was going to work on the land a little bit, adding some grasses and scrub underneath of the trees, a little bit of water makes a difference. And if you're using another brand of brush, because I know a lot of you have you know, bought some when you found a needle brush somewhere, oh, that looks like Sandy's. Uh, if you're struggling with it, then just mix more water in it or mix it thicker and try both and see which works better. Because those other brushes, I found that I had to add more water, which means you can't get really dark, dark darks when you're adding a lot of water to try to get the brush to release the color. So it, there's pros and cons to all different kinds of brushes and no brush is going to make your work do what you want it to do. You have to do what you want it to do. <laughs> it's, there's no magic bullet in finding a brush and picking out one like that. So peel off my tape and my little sketch for today is done. Another page covered in my sketchbook. Hopefully this was helpful to you. I'll see you on Saturday and watch the um, doobly-doo here as well as the premiere that I will post so that you can get a list of supplies and stuff from either this video or that one about what to bring with you. I'll see you Saturday. Take care.